Yeah, so this is this is a really key point here. So how do we get to this 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 idea that will convince somebody who doesn't believe in the existence of God that that Islam actually provides a, a meaningful answer and that belief in God actually is necessary for grounding all of these other concepts that I have in my mind to have a meaningful picture of reality. So the answer is you, you tell somebody, like, think about the fundamental questions that you have as a human being. Some of those questions will be intellectual, some will be moral, some will be spiritual, right? So spiritual questions are like, what makes my life worth living, right? A moral question is, how do I live a good life? How do I know what is good and what is bad? And uh, an intellectual question is, what is worth knowing, right? I have this intellectual capacity, this ability to do logical reasoning. What am I supposed to do with that? Why is it that the universe is comprehensible to a biological organism like myself? What's the whole point of that? Is it just some pointless accident that I have this mind that is able to unlock metaphysical secrets about the universe? Or is there actually an intended purpose behind this? So every single human being has to come up with some meaningful answer to these three domains of questions, intellectual, moral, and spiritual. You can even unpack one of them further. So moral, if you unpack it further, you can see that there's many reasons why belief in, in God is necessary to have a coherent answer to morality. The first is moral ontology, what, which is the existence of good and bad. So a universe without the ex uh, existence of God, a universe that is, that is comprised solely of, of particles, uh, it, it, it fails at, a, um, at an ontological level to have moral good and bad. Morality becomes arbitrary preferences of different arrangements of particles. So the moral ontology, moral epistemology, how do you know what is good and what is bad? Moral right. psychology, what is the ultimate motivation uh, to pursue good and, and, and to avoid bad? Um, moral sociology, how do human beings congregate together with an agreed upon a set of norms about what is good and what is bad? In order to have a coherent answer to spirituality, morality, or intellect, uh, intellectual questions, a person has to have a way of making sense of all of this. And so if I could summarize like the whole idea behind the article in a nutshell, it's not about, um, you know, it's not about what, what we can doubt and, and trying to defeat doubt with a philosophical proof. It's about what makes sense. What is it? What makes sense? Have, what makes sense as an answer to these different domains of questions? So pursuing truth to, uh, means to search for the answers that serve as a, 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 that serve a purpose in making sense of these fundamental questions. And on that point, I, I use one of the, uh, the 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 terminology that's used in the Quran, the word haq. The word haq uh, as truth is also used in the Quran to mean something that has a purpose, right? Khalaq al-samawati wal bil haq. God created the heavens and the earth in haq. Huck here means with a purpose, not pointlessly, right? So in other words, something is true if it also has a purpose, it's meaningful. So there's a teleological dimension of truth. Something is true if it helps construe uh, things as meaningful. And so every human being intuitively prefers a system of belief and value that is able to yield meaningful answers to questions in these three domains rather than answers that are incoherent and meaningless. And ultimately, the human being is confronted with a choice between meaningfulness and meaninglessness. For the right. one who adopts materialism, existence in its entirety is nothing more than, a, than the interactions of a vast soup of purposeless, it goes off the page there, sorry, it's oh, a vast yeah, soup of purposeless okay. particles. Uh, moral values, thoughts, and ideas must be nothing more than the delusions of collections of particles which presume their own consciousness and individu individuated existence. Okay, so we're just nothing more than particles. We think, you know, the particles that are over here think that they're called a person named Nazar Khan. The particles over there think they're a person named Shoaib Malik, but it's just a delusion of particles that presume their own individuated existence, right? That they, the one group of particles is separate from another. Everything in existence that is conceived to have meaning is at its very root and essence ultimately meaningless. Yeah. Uh, and even then, let's say somebody says, okay, that's what uh, my, my logical reasoning leads to. That's what I'm going to affirm. I'm going to be skeptical. I'm going to affirm that the, everything is ultimately meaningless. Even if somebody gets to that point, that nihilistic conclusion, and they say everything is ultimately meaningless, that means existence, it's, that, that means that they themselves are making that claim because they're trying to, to make a truth claim. They're trying to make some, a claim that's meaningful. And hence, they are affirming meaning even as they are trying to uh, affirm meaninglessness. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a point that Ibn Taymiyyah also makes, right? He says, if you ask any human being, would you rather that your mind is populated with true beliefs or false beliefs? 
everyone's going to say, I'd rather have true beliefs in my mind, right? If, would you rather that your, your, your mind is filled with beneficial desires or harmful desires? Everyone's mm -hmm. going to say beneficial desires. Okay, so you have this in your, you know, it doesn't matter whether you believe in the fitra or not, or you call it the fitra or not, you have this natural intuition that you would rather have true beliefs over false beliefs. So where does that come from? And how do you ground that? If the only meaningful way to ground that is belief in the existence of God, then guess what? That's the only meaningful picture of looking at reality. Mm -hmm. So you can understand this at a very advanced philosophical level, as it's done in the article. You can understand it at a very basic level about how belief in God just makes sense of everything, right? Mm -hmm. And that's why, as as Muslims, we you know uh, when we talk about you know, if somebody accepts the message of Islam and you know they you explain the teachings of Islam to them and they're like, yeah, that makes sense. I want to be a Muslim. Do you have to say, wait, wait, wait? Let me give you the Kalam cosmological <laughs> argument. Otherwise, your belief is not going to be based on certainty, right? No, you don't have to do that because what's happening there when somebody embraces the faith is that their fitra, their natural human inclination, automatically agrees with the message that you're giving.